Hello. This is um, the review video for week 20 of second session, and we are um, reviewing our musical terms for ages 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, I would not go into a whole lot of detail with these in the 5, 6 class, so if you'd like to have them skip this video or yeah, sit you know sit through it they can always listen to it but I um, I would be very general with that class so most of this stuff I would go over in more detail with the older kids so we'll first thing we'll re review our music periods or um, periods of time for music and we um, first started this semester by learning about the Baroque period and remember if it's not Baroque then don't fix it but I'm punish that period lasted from uh, the 1650s to the 1750s um, there were a few composers during that period but the most popular ones were Johann Sebastian Bach and George Frederick Handel we've listened to music from both of those gentlemen but the out of those two most people think of um, Bach when they think of Baroque um, and they say that the Baroque period ended with Bach because he actually died in 1750 and nobody could really um, Nobody could really fill his place. After that period came the classical period, and the classical period lasted from the 1750s to the early 1800s. The most uh, famous composers that we've talked about in class are Joseph Haydn and um, W.A. Mozart, Wolfgang Albanese Mozart. Um, Mozart we've talked about in depth last time, and um, got to listen to some of his like Rondo alla Turca. We talked about his rondos and things like that. Today we're going to be focused on the Romantic period. And oh, I guess I should say, remember that the classical period was similar to the Baroque period, but they wanted it more refined and dignified and just classic. And you know, when you were doing music, you had to do it the right way. And there were rules and you had to be refined. You wouldn't exactly show your emotion. You'd go and you'd dress up and you'd go to the concert and you'd sit there but that was also a time socially where you didn't really talk about your feelings you just you know you were always pleasant and you didn't get into a lot of drama or anything like that and the music was was uh, followed along those lines as well so everything was refined and dignified and just nice um but then along came the classical period and um we're going to be talking a lot about Ludwig van Beethoven, van Beethoven today. And it's important that you say van Beethoven because von Beethoven actually is, a, is means something different in German. <laughs> so it's like a different stipulation. So um, he wasn't von, he was van. And um, he had, he was the person that, or the composer that most people say in, kind of invented the romantic style of music. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Before we go into that, let's review some of our terms. Not like that. Let's review some of our terms. Let's try that again. Um, that we have discussed in class. So legato is a style that means connected. So when I was playing the tin whistle and I'd go, Ooh, that would be legato uh, or singing. And then staccato is our next one, and that means marked. So just shortened, not shortened, but like, the emphasis is on it. So, do, 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 do. Missed that last one. Fugue is something we talked about in relationship to Bach. He was very good with the fugue. Um, and it's where you have multiple voices all doing different things at the same time. It's kind of very confusing, but he was very good at making fugues. Um, rondo is uh, when the main theme returns again throughout a piece of music. So that main theme or that melody will come back and then it'll go away and then it'll come back and it'll go away. And uh, we listen to Mozart's Rondo alla Turca for that one. We listen to Bach's Fugue in D minor for that one. Just kidding. Okay, so sonata, we've talked about um, that meaning sounded in Italian. A lot, um, most of your musical terms are going to be in Italian. And it's usually written for one or two instruments. So today I'll show, I'll um, 
I'll let you listen to, I'm just going to show you, uh, I'll let you listen to a bit of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. So that's a sol for a soloist, a solo piano. Concerto means concert. So instead of just one or two instruments, you have many instruments and one soloist. We've talked a little bit about tempo. This is the speed at which music is played. There's lots of different ones, but the most, uh, the ones that we always think of are the most fun are prestissimo, which is very, very fast, right? Prestissimo, also it's very fun to say. And then grave, which looks like grave. So that means slow. So slow you're almost dead, right? Grave. Um, so those are the ones on the extremes, prestissimo and grave. And all the ones in the middle are the usual ones, moderato is medium. Dynamics, remember that um, dynamics are the volume at which music is played. So um, in Italian, they are marked as uh, with piano and forte, because piano actually means soft. So this PP, PP, hmm means, it stands for pianissimo, pianissimo, and again, another beautiful Italian word, means very soft. So when you're playing pianissimo, you are playing very soft. And then it gets higher, um, higher, louder, piano, and louder, mezzo piano, mezzo means medium, and mezzo forte, medium loud, forte, loud, and fortissimo, which means very loud. And of course, when you see this in music, this is going to help you determine your dynamic as well because if you see a crescendo, it looks like a great, like, a, you know, a less than sign is getting bigger. It is. It's getting bigger. It's crescendoing. It's getting louder. It's increasing. This is a decrescendo. And yes, it means decreasing. So decrescendo. It's getting, getting le uh, less in volume. What's the right word? Softer. Okay. So now that that's over, let's. Um, talk a little bit about Beethoven and the Romantic period. So I'm going to start by playing you a song that you probably have heard before. I shouldn't call it a song. It's a symphony. And I don't know where it went. Shame on you, computer. There it is. Okay. And um, let me turn it up. But everybody has probably heard this at least once or twice in their lifetime. <laughs> So that, that is called Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and um, that um, it's it's uh, one of his most famous pieces. He's got a lot that are famous, but um, one of the reasons that was famous is because it kind of was his stepping stone into romantic music. See, when Beethoven was um, just learning as a young kid, he would have been in the classical period, okay? So he was born in the classical period and he learned the style of the classical period. So most of the music he wrote early in his lifetime kind of sounded classical. It was, he was a classical composer at that point. But as he got older, things changed. And um, let me look at my notes. Um, his life had a lot going on. So when he was young, his father would, um, push him to play and push him to practice. He'd get him out of bed at night, in the middle of the night, drag him out of bed to practice. Um, his father was just very focused on what his son could bring to the family and always pushed him to perform and to do well. So there was a lot of pressure on Beethoven to be um, a good musician. And he actually it was very good, but there was a lot of pressure on him. And then he went on to study with 
who he actually studied with Haydn. So um, Beethoven studied under Haydn, and um, Mozart actually did hear Beethoven play. And Beethoven, um, Mozart, when he after he heard Beethoven play, said, "Watch out for that Beethoven. He's the world's going to be talking about him someday." So that was kind of neat um, that Mozart actually, you know, in his greatness and in his, you know, progeny or whatever you would call it, just looked at Beethoven as a young player and said, he's going to do great things. So um, he started having some success. He traveled, he gave concerts and um, made a little bit of money. He... Um, he did some exciting things, and then some bad things happened. His mother died, his sister died, his father died, and he felt really alone. And then, right before, um, right around this time of the Fifth Symphony, Beethoven started going deaf. And for a musician, that's really heartbreaking. It means he wouldn't, he is heart starting to have trouble hearing his music. He knows that there's his time is limited. There's not going to be a whole lot of time for him to be able to write all the music that he wants to write and be able to hear it so he's heartbroken over this and so right around this time he is starting to put all of this emotion that he's having inside into his music and that's kind of what blossoms into the romantic style of music because before where it would be very music would be very dignified and and you know very nice to listen to beethoven really gave that big huge sound and he was able to communicate those big emotions with that big sound that you would have never heard before. So the orchestra in the Romantic period grew. There were more instruments, so it could be louder. There were lush instruments that could play things that the classical period couldn't play. And they um, were, it was all designed to bring the listener into this emotion that the composer was having so this piece of music specifically when you hear bum 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 it's kind of like fate knocking at the door and saying hey i've come to take something that you love away you know in in beethoven's case it was his hearing and um so this this piece of music kind of tells about his despair and his bitterness about having to go through this but also if you listen to the whole symphony there's actually um a piece uh, you know it kind of turns into this redemptive piece of music to where he kind of finds the will to to go on and the motivation to keep going and he did in his life he he kept going he actually had to communicate through written notes um because as his hearing left he had, um, he just couldn't communicate with people. So not only could he couldn't hear his his music that he loved so much, he couldn't even hear his friends when they were talking to him. It got so bad that they had to write notes. So he felt so isolated and so alone at that point. And then in order to hear his music, he would pound on the keyboard. And so much so that in the apartments where he was living, people just hated him because they were, <laughs> he was always just banging on the piano. Um, but he had to do that in order to hear the vibration. And it's also said that he had to cut, he cut the legs off of his piano and set it down on the floor so that he could hear the pitches through the vibrations on the floor. And he'd sit on the floor and just, or sometimes he'd put his ear to the floor and pound the piano on the floor so he could hear the vibration. Um, so it's just about his struggle of trying to enjoy that thing that he really loved and he didn't want to let go of. But if you can imagine having something that you love so much and then suddenly not being able to do that thing anymore, that would be heartbreaking. Um, he wrote in a letter to some of his friends, he wrote, Oh, you men, you think that I am malevolent, that means mean, or stubborn or misanthropic, that means he doesn't care about anything, but how greatly you wrong me. My bad hearing means that there can be no relaxation with my fellow men, no refined conversations, no mutual exchange of ideas. I must live alone like one who has been banished. So that's how he felt. He couldn't even um, be a part of society. Um, he also had some really cool quotes about music, though. He really loved his music, and he said, To play a wrong note is insignificant. 
but to play without passion is inexcusable. So again, that that's a, that's more that comes from the Romantic period. So whereas you were really refined with the classical period, the Romantic period was all about passion, putting your passion into your music. So he was like, hey, you play a wrong note, no problem. But if you p- play without passion, it's not even worth it. Go home. <laughs> His uh, other quote that I want to share with you says, "Music should strike fire from the heart of into the heart of a man, and it should bring tears to the eyes of a woman." So again, trying to bring out that emotion using music to to do that. Um, so while I'm finding his Moonlight Sonata, I'll let you listen to a little bit more of the Fifth Symphony. <laughs> music was on Bugs Bunny and Tom and Jerry all the time. Okay, so this next one that I want to end on today is um, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. And remember, we talked about what a sonata is. Okay, it's um, going to be like a solo instrument. This is one of his mo- his other, he's got so many famous pieces, but oh, and of course, there's going to be a... When we first uh, arrive... Oh, at- no, there's going to be a commercial... There we go. This is Moonlight Sonata, so it's a keyboard solo. This performer's doing it on piano. Is bum 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 bum. That's his Ninth Symphony. So Beethoven really left his mark on the musical world, and as I said, he was um, the person that people credit with really creating that romantic sound in the romantic style. So, all right. Thanks so much for joining me on this lovely video. And I get to see you, oh, not next week, but in two weeks. Bye.